is against this bottle of Russell's Reserve 10, as you guys saw on that Monday. Now, hey guys, welcome. Uh, I'm starting to do it already. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Whisker Fight TV. Um, it's pretty much just me sitting here. I'm gonna try for once a fortnight. Mm, we're going for bi-monthly at the moment. Bi-monthly? Um, it's just me sitting here drinking whiskey telling you guys all about it. Now, I have two bottles in front of me. Uh, the first one is Russell's Reserve. It's a 10-year-old whiskey from my favourite part of the world, Kentucky. Um, so it's classified as a bourbon. Let us get this sucker popped. Aggressive pop. I like that. That's a, um, a good way to kind of start this evening. Hopefully that was good. Delicious stuff. So I'm going to attempt to remove the plastic. I'm going to be unable to remove the plastic without... Ah, oh, a little bit of sniffy sift. Um, that smells amazing. Um, just got my uh, dual wall glasses here, so pour myself a little bit. Um, that's what we're all about. So, as I kind of let that aerate because, you know, just cracked this bottle open tonight, let us hook into it. So, as I said, bottle of Russell's Reserve 10 year, it is 90 proof or 45% alcohol by volume. It's 10 year old. It costs anywhere between 60 to $70 Australian and $40 US of total wine. Now, it runs a new chart American oak cast and 75% corn on the mash bill supplemented by your, what have we got? 13% rye and 12% malted barley. Now, let's break into the notes and then we'll uh, get into the tasting room. This bottle of Russell's Reserve Tenure is the entry point for Russell's Reserve uh, Down Under, I guess. This 10 year old small batch bourbon coming from a number four alligator charred barrel is bottled at the 90 proof Point. This gift from the legendary distilling duo that is Jimmy and Eddie Russell uh, was kind of given to uh, us, the community, and uh, they just continued to pioneer the, I guess, the new generation of American whiskey. There's a random bug floating around. Uh, <laughs> the new generation of bourbon boom. Now, we are at two minutes into like 20 seconds, and I smashed through all of that because I normally spend about half an hour talking shit. It's good, it's good. This is gonna be a real quick episode, then. I'm, I'm gonna like this, um, but I'll end up chopping it up and adding in some old episode bits anyway. So, this stuff has come from Lawrence Berg, I believe. Um, it's all, it's all bottled in Kentucky, it's, see if there's anything on there I can tell you about it. Uh, it's a ten year old, ten year old, uh, bourbon, it's, uh, 45 percent alcohol, which is 90 proof, so you pretty much just half the proof, get your percentage, um, Well, it just says, uh, it gives you a little bit of tasting notes on there. It's just rich, spicy vanilla flavours. So that would be interesting to wrap my lips around. Just kind of bring that into frame there for you guys so you can see it. Be very gentle with it. Uh, Let's kind of crack into the tasting here. So, this one was fun when I tried it earlier. I got some really interesting notes. So, just on the nose, you've got your
it's it's really interesting kind of combination that's going on here because I'm getting this kind of like orange peel, orange zest. Then I got like this oak and there's some vanilla in there and maybe like some a little bit of like marshmallow kind of vibe going on. And it's all kind of like blending into like one scent and it's not it's not separated at all like normally as you know something you're like yes i'm getting this note i'm getting this note and like i stood here for about 20 minutes earlier and i'm just like i'm just nosing this and i'm writing it down and i'm like yes i kind of get this i kind of get that but no it's all infused in one and you just like what is this ball of like orange marshmallowy something or other and it's just like mm, yeah very interesting for the nose now for the taste So, for the taste, it's giving me kind of like, so, thin viscosity. I was expecting it to be a little bit thicker coming in at 90 proof, but relatively thin. Even kind of see by the legs there, it's, um, it's running down rather quickly. So, obviously not as thick, not as viscous. Some, like, kind of real light, uh, it's a heat kind of hitting the side of the tongue there, mainly living there. And I kind of want to say like there's some, um, as I gave it that Kentucky chew, there's a bit more butterscotchy note happening there. Uh, but it's still like relatively sweet. Maybe, and the, there's not really much spice going on. So for the palate, not too much going on. Yeah, uh, that's that's all I had for the palate anyway. So we, we covered those bases. Now, for the finish. So... This one's rather interesting considering it is 13% rice. So straight off the bat, I kind of got something that's relatively similar to a rind note there. I've just got like this spearmint kind of mint note that's happening very at the very start, but it's got a long finish, right? So long finish, spearmint note. There's also some oak notes in there as well. It's uh, like, it kind of hits that mid, Nitty, uh, mid part of your tongue there that's like really oaky kind of dries it out a little bit but it's not overpowering which is nice let me give this sucker another taste and I'll, uh, I'll continue to push on yeah so Spearmint up front. Maybe that orange zest has come back a bit. Should come back, say hello. Um, and yeah, I still got that oak drying note just out on the mid palette there. I think that's, and I got all that too, so perfect. Okay, cool. I haven't missed any tasting notes that I wrote down, which is always nice. No trusty water here as well. Kind of wet the palate a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, pretty much as everyone, you know, you'll sniff alcohol and it's just like very strong, but you're getting those, it's like a sweet, sweet sense coming off it. But um, it's very, as I sound, they're very vanilla y. So, That was not the best place to pull. 
<laughs> we may have to chop that out. <laughs> okay. So, I definitely drank way too much of that, so I'm gonna try again. <coughs> so what that is, because when you, you swallow it, what they call Kentucky hug, so when you're consuming it, it kind of goes down here and it just warms you up in here. But when you do that and do what I just did, and you get that burn in the back of your throat, that's just like the potency of the alcohol. Um, but I, I pretty much just got all burned, but when I was, I just had it in my mouth for a little bit, and it was just highlighting notes along the top of my tongue and then going down the side, uh, closer to the back of my mouth. So, but no, as I said, um, just really sweet notes to it. Um, like caramel, getting like just highlighting just the sweeter side in there. So, uh, I'm gonna move along. Would you like to compare the colors of the two? In the actual glasses up close to the camera. Okay, yeah, we can, we can do that. Compare the colours. Yeah. It actually looks like the one on the right, which is the Makers, has a lot darker of colour. Which usually has to do with the, the ageing, which is interesting. Because your Russells is sat in a barrel for longer. Yeah. Onto the buy barrel pass then. So, seven and a half minutes, we're doing okay. Buy barrel pass, so basically me breaking down a bottle to let you guys know whether I think you should buy, pick it up at a bar, or totally pass on it and spend your money on something else. Now, let's hit it with it. Um, ooh. Okay, so this one I must have a really odd batch because this is a little funky. Now, normally I'm not a fan of small batch stuff, only because uh, I, I do find it's like typically a lot younger, but these guys are pushing out the small batch stuff at 10 years old, so, uh, which is, I guess, directly comparable to the uh, Eagle Rare, which is, it's technically single barrel, but not. So that's the only real like comparison point we have there. Um, that, uh, so it's got a long finish, but it's not too, okay, cool. Um, I didn't really understand what I wrote. Um, so a uh, long finish that isn't too crazy. So it doesn't have, I wanna say like too much going on there. You can easily break down those notes and go, okay, cool. It's got this, it's got this, it's got this. And it's not like a meter and a half long list of like, oh, it's got all these notes and it's, I want to say it's well layered. Let's let's call it that. Just on the finish there, it's priced out at sixty to seventy bucks, and that is an all day pickup for me. So you guys know exactly where I'm landing at a buy for this sucker, because hey, like you cannot go wrong with sixty seventy dollar ten year old juice. Um, as I said, the only direct comparison point we have for ten year old juice is Eagle Rare, and you can pick it up between eighty to ninety Australian dollars. I think last time I saw it was about 85 on Uncle Dan's member special. So once again, it's a good price point for it. I enjoy it, uh, but we're talking about a different kettle of fish here. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. We are two spills since last episode now, so we are doing rather well, especially on that long pour. Very happy with it. Uh, but let's wrap it up there at the 10 minute mark. So. But yeah, that's I guess that's the first episode of Whiskify TV. Um, comparing these two delicious, delicious bottles of, uh, of gold deliciousness. Um, I'm going to save you two bad boys for later, because... Anyway, um, thank you for watching, and, yeah, just stay tuned for the next episode of Whisker Fire TV. Thanks, guys. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, because I enjoyed creating it, and hopefully that you guys enjoyed it as much as
me, I guess. I was going somewhere with that, but kind of just tailed off to nothing. So thank you. Love y'all. Stay thirsty. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. I'm Jez. Peace.